execute for teams, champions using teams effectively. And we're here to just geek out on teams. Maybe I can answer your questions. Uh, and um, maybe you can answer some of mine. So uh, diving right in. Again, you know, you can come off mute or hit the chat. And I see in the chat a question about users getting a pop-up offering, offering them to switch to new teams. Okay, and then what new functions will be in a new team? So, so first off, uh, given that I know you're GCC there, that's interesting news because I think at last time we got together, I don't think um, the new teams was there for everyone. Is uh, maybe by thumbs up, is everyone seeing the option for new teams in uh, in their GCC clients? see a couple okay so see a couple i see a few that didn't uh do a thumbs up so it might still be uh rolling okay no, only a few of ours okay so it's sort of kind of there all right um so in fact in the um gcc environment we're looking at here my demo environment i have yet to get that pop-up so and even in my environment i don't have that option so that's interesting uh, data right there. So we, thanks for that. Uh, but then the question being, what new functions are in the new teams? Um, so let me switch over to, uh, I think I did that right. Yep, this is my commercial tenant, which um, is, is this the new teams? I believe so. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, we could tell by the little uh, icon there that says new <laughs> as well as in the taskbar. All right. So I am on the new teams here in um, in my commercial tenant. So in terms of what's new, uh, this, this won't be an exhaustive list, but I'll say one um, on the back end, the, you know, the marketing talks about this being uh, more uh, better performing uh using lighter resources so if you have uh have had users who have in the past complained about you know the teams as a hog or uh seems like it's a heavy lift using up all my ram all all of those kind of things is what the new teams is meant to address so in a perfect world your users will say um hey this new teams is uh operating a lot more efficiently or something to that effect. It, it, and that's for those users that even pay attention to ever open up their task manager and pay attention to RAM and things like that or, or so forth. So that's pro that's one of the big ones. We, we certainly have customers who do pay attention. So that's this is a big deal for that. Um, and then you'll see some subtle differences around, um, you know, you will see the new channel uh, uh, experience, which I believe in GCC, you you got that today that I think recently rolled out just the, the channel experience where, for instance, you're seeing new posts at the top with this uh, new, uh, you know, a, a new look to post creation, things like that. Um, what I don't, I'm not sure is rolled out along with that experience in GCC is also this ability to pop out conversations. And hopefully that makes sense when I, when I say a conversation, right? That's an actual like little, th oh, this is a good example here. Let me kill this one. Uh, this long conversation here, you know, is occurring in the channel itself, but to you to do this and to be able to pop that out, um, uh into its own little thread and, and then be able to kind of monitor and reply to this chat in its own window is a is a nice little feature i actually love that feature same thing with links to conversations they you know depending on your configuration you could get those to open up in their own window which keeps uh in my opinion helps you stay in in focus of what you're working on as opposed to going all the way to the channel where you may not be interested in the other channel content um trying to think off the top of my head of some of the other you know there'll be there'll be other subtle things i think throughout it uh, i think the search experience is a little it's changed a bit in terms of uh the um 
the res not I didn't want that. Uh, the results. Let's do town here. Uh, I think this here looks a little different as well as in the channel itself. Um, doing control, uh, I think it's control F and searching. Let's just search for report. I believe this kind of look and feel is a little different as well. So some some subtle, uh, you know, differences in the UI. The big one is the performance piece, the new channel experience. Um, and uh you know anything else I, I don't know maybe forgetting that maybe it's just in a uh probably in the in the blog post uh da, 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 da. yeah so i don't know if anybody's uh could think of yeah this is probably the best blog for that let me just scan here real quick to see is it more flexible ba, ba, ba. Da, da, da. yeah i think i might have hit the good the high points there so probably the biggest one being performance. And this is kind of old, actually. This might not be the best one, but probably performance is the, the key one. And then uh, some of the channel and chat exp UI or experience is probably going to be the next big thing, I think. Okay. Um, so yeah, so good to know that that's starting to pop up in, um, in uh, commercial. Again, if anybody else got any other questions or any even feedback to that, come off mute or put your questions or comments in the chat. Uh, happy to talk through that. Uh, I am a I am so far a fan of the new teams uh, other than I specifically have certain needs that aren't quite there yet. Actually, um, you probably heard me in the past talk about uh, stream deck, my little, you know, button thing for reactions and all that that actually they are uh i think they're rolling out that fix there there was there was a uh, that that was lost that feature was lost with the new teams i believe that's starting to roll out now and uh i also have a fancy presenter plus you know clicker that lets me mute in my meetings or whatever that's still not there but also on the roadmap so i've i got unique needs <laughs> it probably doesn't surprise you that um uh, the new teams is still trying to catch up on. Um, but, you know, last I saw it was in the 90 something percent of all old features are making their way into new or have made their way into new. So uh, we're pretty much uh, there. Uh, which is actually a good segue to at least one thing. I had a handful of things I was going to talk about, but that one thing um, that I could talk about when you talk about features making their way from old to new. Um, we go back to the GCC. So G whether it's GCC or whether you're in the old client, if you come, come into chat uh, and you come uh, to the drop down here, you've got contacts. And I don't know how many of you use this. Uh, you might consider that a little bit hidden. I mean, it's it's easy to miss. If you're a, a Skype a Skype user, I know we haven't used that phrase in in a few years, but you know we had those contacts, um, and many people were uh, religious about their contacts, like me, um, and the groupings and all those things. And so we have that in what we'll call now classic teams, and and what is currently the GCC version, unless you guys are upgrading to the new. Um, and pretty basic, right? Your favorites and, and creating new new uh, projects uh, or new groups. Uh, of course, you can click on them to start up a chat or to see their um, profile cards, things like that, and their presence. This was also it was always a cool way for me to come in and see presence on a particular um, uh, person or a group of people, like my peers. You know, just seeing them all in one one shot. So in, in my, you know, real teams, I've got a bunch of groups and I've got customers and, and internal folks and all that good stuff. So contacts is there. If I go back to commercial and go to teams, so basically new teams, you won't, you will not find the drop down there. And so then you'll say, well, Ricardo, you just told me that 90 some percent of the features are over. Where is, where is it? 
believe this is one that instead of them just recreating it as it is in classic teams, if you go to the app store, uh, store and type people, oops, you will see a new app called people. And this is the new equivalent of the contacts of classic teams um, that we just saw. Same general functionality. And, you know, if, they, if they've added something new here, I don't know that I've necessarily seen it yet. Um, but, um, you know, all of this is, uh, uh, I'll try. Uh, what's the uh, Nestor uh, versus in there? Typical functionality. Um, da, 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 it's save. Um, I guess it looks a little different here in terms of the um, being over, you know, seeing a little more detail over on the side. I can, uh, where's my category creation? Da, da, da. Now that's interesting. I know I've created category. When you create categories, they will appear here. Uh, now I'm forget. I have categories in my own. I'm forgetting how I got there. Uh, da, ba, da, ba, da. That's interesting. Oh, oh, there we go. From the person. So um, create. There's my category or with the little tag symbol. Um, so yeah, other that that certainly is a big biggest difference. I mean, you just saw me to the groups and uh, on the other side. So categories, again, if there's a, uh, if there is a, you know, revolutionary new functionality this, I haven't seen it yet, but it does get the job done in terms of what I need in terms of uh, putting my favorites and my contacts into groups here. Um, I don't think I can reference these categories or mention them or anything like that. So, but I did want to call that out because I I kind of had to stumble on that myself. That wasn't immediately obvious to me that contacts had gone away and that it was replaced by an actual app, which as you can see now is pinnable on the left rail. Uh, previously, it, it would always be, what would that be? One, two clicks to get to your contacts and classic teams. And now in theory, you can get there in one. Um, and in fact, if I switch back, I don't know, can I, could I do calling, uh, can I, I should, well, of course I can call when, once the, uh, profile comes up, but what I'm not getting is, um, that, you know, view of their kind of a long card here. When I click on them, I'm getting their, their chat area versus here. Uh, clicking on all contacts, I'm getting this this list view, which I can sort and search for as well, uh, which is which is nice. Um, and so, so of course I can call them from there. And uh, can are any of these new? I don't know. Add to fair I meaning. These, these are all there. It's just a new look. I like it. So the main thing is just uh, letting you know that that exists at all. Um, and then you might say, hey, I actually like the new look and feel of this. So um, if I learn more about it, I don't know if anybody's ever tried this on in their personal accounts or whatever. If I learn more about this, I'll let you know. But so far, all I've done is just uh, recreated my categories. I did see on one of my accounts that it pulled categories in based on, I believe, my Outlook uh, groupings. So I, once I fired this up in one of my tenants, it already had a bunch of categories that I think it got from Outlook. So if you already invested some time there, that's a good that's good news that it'll bring those back in. Um, so just wanted to call that out. I don't know if anybody about thumbs up, even you, do you use your contacts um, in Teams or only in Outlook? Anybody use Teams contacts in Classic View? OK, no thumbs up. So. OK, one. All right. So then this might be uh, game changing info for the rest of you to even know that there was any <laughs> contact management uh, in teams. So so again, and the, the main thing I do here, because um, I don't even think it's be one thing if I could call this whole group. I don't think you can do that in either one. But the main thing I do here is just to have them in one place. 
Uh, I like seeing the presence of all of those people or the presence of any, any one, you know, one person just coming in here and to see their presence um, is a big thing for me. And then just general, um, just general organization. Um, so good stuff there. In the chat, a uh, user asked about adaptive cards, now known as universal actions for adaptive cards. Um, I had bet way back when adaptive cards first started, um, they weren't in GCC initially, and I was waiting for them to come into GCC for me to start demoing it. Uh, and then I just never, <laughs> they, they came to GCC and I just never got around to it. Uh, but what they are, and I'm wondering if I've got an example. I think I do because I'm pretty sure I created one. Um, oh, I don't know how I would find it. Uh, let's do one search here. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, this might be. Go to the message. Oh, there we go. Look, I, I'm good. My search, my search techniques are fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let me go to the channel itself. So this is a very basic card. Um, um, and I believe I was using Power Automate to push this out. Uh, but basically, a, as the name implies, a card that has some um, dynamic data in it and even button ability to add buttons to it to uh, interact with the data. I don't, yeah, I don't know if I can't remember what I did was doing here. This was back, I don't know how long, 2020, that's interesting. Oh, it must be some automated workflow I got that's still pushing out data because that's literally saying uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, but I know this thing is super old if I were to go back 2022 at least. So I've got some power, some power automate that I probably need to clean up because it's still cranking out meaningless info. But um, as you can see here, I had something to set a due date, which brought up additional fields where I could insert some info. I don't know if this actually will work, but I'll hit OK. And probably doesn't do anything again. I was, this is probably some demo I was working on and uh, view button. It doesn't seem to do anything either. But this is what you call an adaptive card. They can get a lot fancier than this. Um, I have a blog post out there that talks about uh, me basically talking to a SQL server and and basically imagine filling in these data, these areas with actual value from a values from a um, database, things like that. So whatever fanciness you could do in a Power Automate and and bringing in. Um, data and things into that Power Automate flow, you could surface them here as well. Um, in fact, I think uh, if, I think in the past you've seen me do, you know, Power Automates related to forms that are submitted. Send me an email once a form is submitted, but also when that form is submitted, send a note to my team's channel, and that could just be a normal text note, or it could be a card. Um, why would I want a card as opposed to just a normal post? One, because it's prettier, uh, <laughs> um, could be formatted a little better, and of course, the ability to have these buttons. So that's the that's the thirty second. Uh, what is an adaptive card thing? Now, question in the chat is cards version two, now known as universal actions for adaptive cards. So that part, I'm not not up on the latest of what's going on with the cards. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say they're making it a lot easier to do. Uh, in in the, the, the old way, involved a lot of JSON, which most of the time you could copy and paste from some uh, uh, pre previous example. But I know there's, there's a lot of uh, enhancements happening in the Power Automate, some of them AI uh, driven that are making all of the creation of these things um, much easier. So it's not just about, you know, just like we did old school with HTML code, you always go find some HTML, pop it in yours and then start tweaking it. It was a similar concept for these adaptive cards, but we're trying to get a little more elegant with them. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of make a note to maybe do that as a, um, 
demo in a future session. Again, I bought that was always on my to do list and then it just fell off the list uh, over the years. Um, so, so yeah, so you're saying the users are asking about adaptive cards. I'd say kind of uh, continue to look into that. They are cool. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe in a future session we can go through some use cases on how to use those. So I sort of kind of answered the question, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, and then another question in the chat. Uh, sharing emails in Teams, trying to read the entire email in the Teams chat. It was posted is the only way to open that email by downloading it. It's not opening with the option to open in Teams. Yes. Uh, so. I think um, you're talking, I think you're talking about if we were to go to Outlook here um, do, 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 and hit the share to Teams button. We could do that here real quick. Uh, is it, where is it? It's, uh, where is it? Should I have gone to old? Outlook. Share to Teams. Let me open up old Outlook. And that's not it. I must have made my defaults uh, all new. But let's see. Let's see if my search skills are on point again and I can find. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've done. Oh, is this it? Wow, I am good. Do you guys realize how good I am? So, <laughs> uh, in fact, this might not be it, actually. Um, uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's try that one more time. Digest. Da, 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 da. Email. This might be. I don't know. Oh, so that that so we're still getting there. And the fact that you just saw that it didn't, as you mentioned in the chat, didn't want to open in um, Teams. It was opening it elsewhere. Let me see. Uh, trying to open the actual email. Oh, no, that's not going to work. These are just uh, actual email files. So I don't think I have a good example here. But yes, when you send the email from Outlook to Teams, it does a little snippet of it and then attaches the email for anybody that for, if it's a long email and they need to see the rest, they open up the email. But uh, and I can't remember. It sounds like you're saying the email does not open in Teams. I can't remember my experience there. That, that, that does sound about right. Um, so uh, so, yeah, it will probably um, want you to download and open, um, you know, in your actual Outlook client. I just don't have an example other than the fact that we did find these because it's basically a dot email or a dot MSG and we're and, and in both cases we're seeing teams kick it out to the browser in order to open it. So that would um, kind of confirm what you're saying there about it not opening in teams. Um, but only thing I I'm not showing you as a nice example of a, I mean, they basically look like this. Um, now here's the email, is it gonna open and make me a liar? Thinking about it. I don't know, I don't know if this is your, has been your experience with uh, what you were asking about. Yeah, it's thinking about it. I feel like I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see. This happens to be a short one because uh, it's not even uh, it's not even. Well, I don't see the uh, attached email here. I mean, if I don't want to go to the channel there. So it's interesting that it's trying instead of kicking me right out. So results may vary. We could also look and see what new teams does. I don't know if there's a new experience here. I haven't tried that, but um, but I guess one short answer is or one short uh, comment to all of that is just that, yes, 
uh, there's use, you know, useful cases of being able to send an email into Teams. And why would I do that? Why, why share to Teams is even a thing is because you're trying to take that conversation out of Outlook, where in many cases, it's not a most efficient way to have a conversation and bring it into Teams where you can have more of a threaded chat about it. Um, and so in theory, this then kicks off the emails there, but now we can actually kick off all our replies related to that uh, in Teams instead of continuing to have uh, an email conversation about it. I don't know. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. OK, so. Yeah. So general concept there. Good stuff. Um, I think I was going to show something else. And it's now escaping me. If there's any other questions, hit them in the chat. Come off mute. Um, as I try to think about the other thing I was going to show. Switch over here real quick. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it's not coming to me at the moment. Uh, let's see any other questions in chat? No, nope, okay. Good deal. Uh, in the couple minutes we got left, I think, um, I believe our next session two weeks from now will be, um, trying to check this calendar real quick. That would be the 15th. So I do still plan to have that session. And uh, then the next one likely would be the 5th because otherwise it'd be the 29th and we'll fall right in the week. I uh, assume you guys will be off. So, um, so yeah. And of course, the date is always on the uh, site at aka.ms slash Q for teams. But just giving a heads up, we'll meet back here two weeks, 15th, and then three weeks on January 5th in the new year. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember last year, we did a lot of new year's best practices maybe we'll try to continue that trend if you liked it for whatever reason it happens to be one of the uh, a very popular one in the youtube uh, channels got a lot of views so apparently people do want to hear about beginning of the year best practices for teams so we'll probably keep that going for 2024. good deal all right well glad everybody could join us again and um We'll keep rocking and rolling on the next one. So, uh, good to see everyone and uh, have a great weekend and great rest of the Friday. Thanks, Ricardo. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the blog for more content.